You're still watching Ways. Now, Purple Day is observed on March 26 around the world to educate the public and create awareness not to fear epilepsy. People are invited to wear purple and host events in support of epilepsy awareness on Purple Day. Did you know that long-term recurring seizures usually can be controlled with treatment, which often includes taking medication, and about 70% of people with epilepsy can control their seizures with medication and or surgery. Did you know that with epilepsy? I almost had a case of epilepsy when I was going to have my first child. I had full-blown eclampsia. And I didn't know. Wow. So during the delivery, I was very extremely close to epilepsy. As in ev any moment from that, at that time, I was going into a brain seizure. And somehow, God does it. So I know I've been very, very close. So they were already telling me the pros and cons and, you know, all the consequences and all that. So I think I have a bit of knowledge of epilepsy. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was incurable. I also thought so too. So I when thought I thought so far you do, you know, we were hoping to get a medical doctor today to educate us on it, but we couldn't get a doctor. Seems like all the doctors are really busy. But you know, I, when I was reading that, oh, it had you could actually, you know, and some Probably people manage manage it. Here. Yes, and no man. But this one that they talked about the medications, the treatments, you know, is to is to keep you stable and all of that. Then also they said with age, um, epilepsy gets to. Uh, so, I mean, with age, you are at risk more, especially when you have the, the history in your oh, family. Oh, yes, yes, but yes it's, her it's hereditary or something like that. So I, I was just hoping we could get a doctor about, um, well, we'll probably look for a day where we can find a doctor to talk to us about it. Because, you know, when I was growing up, when you go for deliverance service, you will see people bringing epilepsy and, you know, like, oh, there is a demon, you know, all those kind of myths around that, that illness. Meanwhile, it's just a, it's just a seizure. Right, but you know, when I was growing up, it was almost like anybody that had epilepsy was possessed by, by demons. You know, so I was really hoping to get a medical doctor to talk to yeah. us. But hopefully, we'll, we'll find one another day. All right, so let me. What did you find first in the news today? Um, it's about um, this young lady who won. Um, um, there's this thing they do in Lagos State. One day, governor. Hmm. There's a competition, spelling competition, that whoever wins becomes the governor of Lagos State for one day. And luckily, it was a female that was it. I think she won it in 2019. I was supposed to do, to carry out the function in 2020, but because of coronavirus, they had to extend it to 2021. But why that particular story was of interest to me was because of one thing that she raised. She talked about the welfare of teachers. Hmm. You know, and it's really, really, because, you know, I'm very passionate about education. Mm. For some reason, I want to be the commissioner of education <laughs> of my state. Honestly, in just give me four years over. Just give me. What's your state? Ogun State. Okay. Honestly, there are a lot of ideas busting in my mind because when th there's no serious nation, no serious nation that does not plan for the future. And what is the future? It's the education. Mm. If there's no education, we're not going anywhere. You're toying with the future of the country. So when she particularly talked about that and she was talking to politicians, I was very happy that mm. she had the guts, you know, to face them in the face and you know, talk to them. So I hope that they take a cue from this and improve the welfare of teachers. Teaching jobs should be one of the most lucrative jobs in the world because mm. they impact knowledge. I treat my daughter's teachers like a semi-god mm. because they impact knowledge into my children. I can't do it. During lockdown, ooh, I didn't teach the frustration with teaching children. So I don't know how they achieve it. And at the same time, you don't pay them well. Mm. So I don't understand the logic of what kind of a country is it, particularly not even Nigeria. I think it's Africa as a whole. Why don't we value the education system? Why, is don't Africa. We, why don't we value you know, teachers? You know, what you're just saying now, I remember uh, uh, my husband and I were having a conversation around uh, one time when he was still in, in the university. His lecturer then turned down a, a shell job ah. for lecturing. That was uh, that how was good... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> That was, Funny enough, that was how good the lecturers were being taken care was of. He ever, then. Was he ever no, no, it was, it was, them at you know, time? At some point, you know, I mean, at some point, Ooh, I they, think were, that was they were being the paid well. Sure. Was not, yeah, he turned it down, you know, but now <laughs> you can't try that. <laughs> Teachers don't have cars. They can't That's even what I'm saying, afford because to the perks that came children. with lecturing then, it was a lot of, Ooh, you know, not they, now. Most of them can't afford to put their children in schools mm. that they teach in. 
you don't pay them on time, they look scruffy. So how do you expect them to impact knowledge into your children? Well, for that one that they cannot afford to put their children in schools that they're teaching, I think it's the conversation that they should have with the school. Because no. I know some teachers, I mean, I know a they single mother. They have 50%. Yes, mm. you have all those discounts what? and all of that. Without discounts, can't no, they might salary. Not be able, of course, you might not be able to. So, so that's why? why you're working there now. You're supposed no, to you don't get what benefits. I'm saying. That they cannot even afford. It means that their salary cannot take them through a normal life mm. of luxury. That's what I'm saying. So they always have to depend on discounts and all that. I think the government needs to do something about it, especially insurance, medical, and, you know, welfare. Increase their welfare, their quality of life. I think that goes for every Nigerian, not really teachers alone. <laughs> but particularly teachers and doctors. Yeah, well, I don't joke with them. Yeah. Teachers, doctors, they are demigods. Everybody, actually. At this point where we are, are in Nigeria. These people are life everybody. savers. These people are life savers. Okay, so let me take my story. It says, um, at last, federal government to increase petrol pump price. Let me just... What yeah, is that last about? <laughs> Didn't they hint us a few again. minutes ago? <laughs> some few days ago. So that says, let me put the bullet point. It says, fixes market price at 234 per oh, liter. they did says, us a favor. 120 billion monthly subsidy is not sustainable. Then NNPC says, no hike until April. Tougher times await nation's economy. Stakeholders insist. Labor uh, raises doubts over NNPC's claim to um, oppose subsidy removal without substitute. PPR is silent over the new template. So we are waiting to see what this, I mean, how this Ooh, will play out. I think in the early days of March, hmm. somehow we just woke up to the news that... Um, we, we suffered the traffic now. Yes, and people were all rushing mm -hmm. and all that. And I was very, very clear. I heard it clearly when they said, we do not intend to hike it in this month of March. Mm. So what did that tell you? Mm -hmm. that Expect it in the month of April. So they were very clear mm -hmm. about what they said. So don't think that they didn't commit to not increasing. They were just committed to not increasing it in At March. That time. So I already suspected that mm. in the month of April, we, but we'll be hearing this subsidy removal every time. Mm. Haven't they removed it? How many times are they going to remove That's subsidy? the question I I think they removed it. That's why we're in 145 or something. So what happened again? That is the question we would like to ask the government. I'm not in the oil industry, so I really don't have an answer. I, really I have some people in the oil industry I could actually bring to, to talk to us on this, you know, but the I, truth is that I at think this it's point, a fluctuating um, this, forex. And it's not even that at this point, honestly, I think I am just really fed up of this country. You know why so I say I'm I fed up? We can't have so much resource and yet be in luck. Be in, thank you. I mean, which, what we should be thinking of, look at the other day, they were talking about um, build, uh, refurbishing the Potaco refinery. Rehabilitating a refinery. You know well, what? Please, do you rehabilitate a refinery? Please, I it's, you it's, rehabilitate it's Friday evening. Do you I'm rehabilitate actually, a refinery? I don't understand. It's Friday I evening, Lami. I actually want to rest because I'm expecting my kids back from school. Oh, I do not want to stress my head. I'm going out to dinner with my ladies t oh. tomorrow. So Who are please. the ladies? Uh, okay, you don't know them. I, ah, would. <laughs> I thought the ladies of the no. ladies of ways. You could, yeah, hey, you'll be fight. there. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be there. Please, let's talk logistics after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back.